Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, October 18th. It's also payday if you buy any of these weekly funds. And it's also expiration day. Uh, so today we will cover the trades for Yield Max funds, Tesla, Kony, Nvidi, Misty, and Amzi. So let's get to it. So Tesla had a trade and Misty had a trade. Almost a, identical, pretty identical. Um, four trades overall. So I'll just cover the one on uh, TSLY real quick and just show you what they did. Um, normally, you know, again, before call credit spread, you know, before that change, you would see three trades. So it's kind of the same thing, except obviously it's four and they added the call credit spread. So what they did was they added to the synthetic on the top two, they added 825 contracts. Uh, again, they added it to the wrong synthetic, but we'll take a look at that, the 255. And you could see, uh, you know, how much it, you know, how much it costs. It's pretty cheap now because it only costs 365 for the buy call portion and the sell put massive credit 3668, which is fine and dandy as long as we make it out alive. And then on the bottom two, uh, they sold a call into next week and next Friday is October 25th. So you can see that expiration date under the ticker and they chose a 232.50 strike price with a call credit spread of 252.50. So we'll take a look at that gap and see what it looks like. All right, let's pull up the spreadsheet. I guess we're officially just in cold weather, which sucks, which means Roddy is probably gone for the season. We'll see. All right. Um, so they again, they have two synthetics, right? Normally, when you have two synthetics, and they add to a synthetic, they would add to the synthetic that has a strike price closer to the price of the underlying. However, this is now, how many now? About three, I would say three at least, uh, where they're adding to the higher synthetic. So the synthetic 245 is 9% away. The synthetic 255 is 13% away. So, but for whatever reason, you know, even though they're closer to the 245, they're not adding to that synthetic. Um, but whatever. Okay, so this 245, again, this sits, it's 9.84% away from making money, 20, 29 days till expiration. The last time they added was the only time they added, which is September 19th. I swear this fund manager forgets he has this synthetic. All right, so let's go to the 255 and let's take a look. So Again, yesterday, 825 contracts. You look and they see the buy call. They only had to pay three, 301,000. Look at the credit, 3 million. I mean, unless they're being risky and they feel like earnings is gonna go their way, earnings is next week, which obviously falls before the expiration date of this synthetic, 11.15, so time will tell. Um, but let's move on. We will go to the October tab, and we will take a look. All right, so yesterday, Tesla went down. It was another boring-ass day, to be honest. Tesla's, like, not fun this week. You know, they're just chilling, chilling out, waiting till earnings, right? It's the calm before the storm. But Tesla went down 0.2%. Tesla, even more boring, didn't even move, right? Just stayed flat, so... Let's uh, let's take a look at the damage with our proper zooming tool, our fat fingers. All right, so before we get into what's left for the today, uh, this is what they added for next week. This is a, again, 1025 expiration. So we have today and then next week, six trading days. 825 contracts, 232.50 strike price, 5.26% out of the money, call credit spread, is 14% out of the money. So pretty big gap, 9% gap. Um, annualized yield, you can see on the top, they yielded 88%, but they paid 19% yield. So they, it's, you know, it's about what, 69% um, yield. 30 day IV is, you know, it's hanging out at 54%. So is this aggressive? Maybe, slightly, we'll see. I feel like that IV honestly should be a little higher with earnings approaching but whatever. All right, so 
you know, again, all of these trades except one. We'll look at the one first. 500 little contracts, 227.50, 2.99% out of the money. Ooh, we getting close. But then all these other ones, you know, we'll just look at the biggest one, but all of the other contracts expire, which expire today. 20, uh, they have a 225 strike price, which sits 1.86% out of the money. But the way Tesla is trading this week, I feel like we got this, right? This should be easy. Because Tesla, I don't know, there's just nothing going on, nothing happening. Ro you know, the robo event last week and then earnings next week. And then the week between is just like, all right, we'll just hang out. You know, we'll, we'll be bu busy enough next week. Because after earnings, we know Tesla's either going to shift up a decent amount or shift down a decent amount. If it stays flat next week, then that'll, that'll be a first. Um, so as far as outstanding shares, increase of 875,000. So yes, people are still buying into Tesla. Is it a smart move? I don't know. That's up to you. 30 day IV, 54%. Outstanding shares, 65 million, 65.9 mil. Total net income, 23.8 mil. Total distribution, 36 cents. Daily income, two cents a day. Daily yield, 0.2%. And annualize that sucker, 72%. So good numbers. Um, yeah, the, the uh, Tesla fund manager thinks he has a winner. What do you guys think? He thinks he's going to close out today. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, by the way, they declare rather soon again, uh, 12 days away, which is October 30th. And uh, yeah, we'll see what that looks like. So, but so far, if we go to the payment information, we can look at the October synthetic income, 8.3 mil, short call income, 23.8 mil, total net income so far, 32.2 mil. That comes to uh, 49 cents per share. But if we look at on the weeklies, the weeklies are paying 36 cents per share. So throw that into the Rodimator. It's going to look like 63 cents uh, when all said and done, which is a 66% yield. Remember, guys, now that we're getting 13 payouts versus 12, you have to, you know, expect it should be lower just simply based on that, right? If all things are equal. And then you got the IV. The IV is 54%. Based on that, it's 52 cents. So uh, the next payment should be anywhere from 52 cents and 63 cents, which, you know, we all know they love paying, especially on Tesla. I feel like they love paying a little more, but... This is what I'm showing as the numbers right now. All right, outstanding holdings. We got the temporary gold digger. You know, it's hopefully she runs away next week after earnings. If she's here to stay, we may be in deep trouble. She may take all of our money, right? I mean, she better be smoking hot for all that money she's going to take. But whew. all right, what else? What do we got for this week? So the 1018s, you see the 1018s? They're just hanging out. Uh, they're the top three. But let's look at the biggest position, the 32,843 contracts. Right now, that thing costs 69 cents to close. So that's good. Hopefully, hopefully, Tesla stays flat. It'll just, you know, the time value, uh, all things equal. If it stays flat, the time value uh, as the day goes on, the 69 cents will go down and down and down and eventually essentially be worthless. We'll call it a penny because they do cash settle. Um, so the lowest price we'll get is, you know, we'll pay a penny out and we'll we'll say, yeah, we won. Let's celebrate. Let's run in the streets naked and party. All right. Total net assets, 755 mil. The NAV is 1146. Trade price, 1145. So again, pretty lame, pretty boring, but finally, Tesla boring. Tesla boring is good. Uh, $11, not really that good, but it's it's been staying around this range. You know, it's been battling, um, but we'll see how things go. All right, so moving on to the other trade of the day. Misty had a trade. Um, so it had four, just like uh, TSLY. Buy, call, sell, put. Okay, they added 990 contracts to their 195 synthetic. They only have one synthetic, so that's easy. And then they sold a call into next week. Great. They chose a 210 strike with a 242.50 call credit spread. And we could take a look at that in a moment. Okay, let's get out of this sheet. MSTY sheet. All right, so here's the 195, 31,000. 
480 contracts. Why? Well, because they added, where the hell is it? There it is. 990 contracts. How much did it cost? Well, the call cost more than the put. Uh, cost 2.4 mil net, you know, net out the put, whatever. It cost about 200 something thousand. So that's fine. That's normal, right? Because MSTR is close to the strike of the uh, the synthetic. So this is like the norm, right? They essentially like to add at the money and then they will, you know, move with the underlying. Uh, this synthetic expires in 29 days, uh, which earnings will happen before uh, this expiration date. MSTR earnings, is it a big deal? I don't know. I haven't been through enough MSTR cycles to know, but um, I'm going to go with not really. All right. So if we go to the September tab, uh, we could see how MSTR did yesterday. Pretty, you know, pretty light day. It was up, down, all around. But in the end, it ended up down 0.35%. MSTY said, not me, brother. I am up 0.21%. So pretty good, you know, good day overall. It's okay to have, a, you know, if you could have a boring day with 105% IV, that's a win. It ain't easy. It ain't easy making money on these high IVs. Or because, you know, it could things could go sideways. However, we've, we've been lucky. Bitcoin has been our friend lately. OK, so let's look at the contracts for next week. Again, 1025 expiration, which is next Friday. 990 contracts, 210 strike price, 8.57 percent out of the money. OK, uh, OK. You know, not the best with the 105% IV, but they do have a call credit spread at 242.50. That's 25% away. 25% away. That's a that's a bit far. Um, I mean, I know MSTR is crazy, but is it worth it? Is it worth it for the freaking 242.50 in there? I don't know, man. All right, so let's look at the total annualized yield. You see 141% for the uh, sell call and they paid 34% yield on the buy call. So if you, you know, kind of deducted two, we're looking at what? 107, 107% yield. Their IV is 105. So that's kind of in line. I have to say, all right, now for today, again, today is Friday. It, they, these, these, uh, contracts expire today. So we'll look at the one, the top 16,745 contracts. 225 strike price, 16% out of the money. Okay, that one, plenty of room to grow. We shouldn't have a worry. The other one, 13,745 contracts, 210 strike price, 8.57% out of the money. MSTR, yes, obviously they could go up double digits. They could blow through that and they could up in, in the dead zone, which would not be good. However, um, that'll be kind of tough to do. So I think we're in a pretty good spot overall. They may need to make a decision early in the day and close this thing out because MSTR is, you know, it's a monster. We've seen it before, right? We, we're winning heading into the Friday. They let it go too far and we end up losing. Um, but it's going to be really, really hard to lose today. You know, overall between those two positions, it'll be really hard to lose that one. Um what does that mean? That means we're sitting pretty. Uh, so outstanding shares is up 450K. All right. So the recap is the 30 day IV is absolutely freaking insane. And I love it. 105% outstanding shares, 23 mil. So net income, no, it's a loss of 35 mil, which is, you know, it is what it is. But we got synthetic income. All they have to do today is hit that button, hit enter and you win. All right. It's just a matter of when, when is the right time to do it, right? Clearly, we don't know, right? We, we, we tell them we rely on them to make this smart decision. So let's hope they're smart today and they make the right decision. I know it's not easy, but let's do it. Group D, this is group D. Finally, five days away. Finally. And um, 1023. That's coming up. It's coming up. I know. What's the estimate? What's the estimate? What, what, what's Misty going to pay? What's Misty going to pay? Right? That is, the, that is the number one question of the week. Let's see. 180 mil. 
synthetic income. Boom. Give me just one of those. That's it. Just give me one. All right. Short call income is not income. Again, it's a loss, 35 mil. So you have to take the total net income, which is 145 mil. Uh, the total income per share is $6.31. However, I do not think they will pay that. Well, no, I, fr- I kind of know they're not going to pay that. Of course, I have been proven wrong many of times. But I will tell you, I think they will pay $3.29 as of today, of course. Um, I will give my official estimate over the weekend. That'll be on the Sunday morning video because now I guess that's a ritual. Uh, But as of right now, it's going to be close to this number, clearly. Uh, But obviously, you know, they're going to make some trades today that's going to affect that number. But right now, it's showing to be $3.29. That's a damn good number. All right, so the Rodimator is useless because the weeklies, you know, they're not making money, but just the IV, 106%. Based on that alone, that's 247, but I think they'll pay more than that. Just my thought. All right, so holdings, what do we got going on? We got nothing. We got synthetic just chilling, and then we got the calls. So the calls... Well, the important one, right? So obviously that buy call, that see that 1018 the, and the lighter, different color blue, two cents that thing's worth. That's the call credit spread. So yes, we have it as, you know, kind of defense, a defensive position in, in some sorts. Uh, but obviously we're going to end up getting like a penny out of that one. So anyway, let's look at the other two. 53 cents to close the one, 10 cents to close the other. This is as of the close yesterday. We don't know how it's going to open today. Um, but if MSTR opens green, these could be a little more costly. If MSTR opens flat or red, these could go, you know, slightly down in price, but we'll see again, they got to make the right move. They got to close it at the right time to make sure we get the maximum yield, yield, max, maximum yield, yield, max, maximum yield. All right. Total net assets, 643 mil. Damn. The NAV is 2793 and the trade price is 2801. That's an eight cent gap if you care. All right, so that's it for the trade. So we'll just go to NVIDIA and see where we stand. Um, they got a, what, what they got? The 130 synthetic, just chilling. 64 days till expiration. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, they're priced above it, 5.33%. I mean, the freaking earnings coming up, man. November 26th. But I saw something that uh, someone said they're, they're going to have great earnings. It's like, okay, how do you know? I just, I hate the speculation part of this. Like, just everyone knows everything. I'm like, I don't care about that. That's why options is so great. It just doesn't matter, right? Whatever, do what you got to do. You know, everyone's always right, you know. But anyway, let's, let's continue. NVIDIA is up 0.89%. NVIDIA, good job, NVIDIA. You're up 1.2%. Wow, that, that's pretty impressive, to be honest. Okay, but no trades. So let's see. Let's see what the what the damage looks like here. What do we got? We got one trading day left, right? Get this all on one freaking screen. God forbid it'd be easy, right? All right, so we did it. We did it. Um, so we got one strike, just one stinking strike, all eggs in one basket, and it's not going to be easy. They have the 1600 and the 89,000, so you see. Um, but anyway, the strike price is 138. 138 strike price, 0.78% out of the money. That is not safe. Not one bit. So here's another one. What the hell are they going to do? Close it out. Take the profit while they can. Trust their gut. Let it expire into the end of the day. Take that risk. I don't know. The call credit spread, 5% away, probably not going to help. So uh, we'll probably make a, you know, a penny on that. So let's take a look at the outstanding shares. We had a decrease of 500K. Some people took their winnings and they moved on. 30-day IV, 51%. Outstanding shares, 47.7 mil. And yes, believe it or not, there's still no weekly income for NVIDIA, which is crazy. <coughs> sorry, I had to sneeze. <coughs> All right, sorry about that. Okay, uh, reaction. Um, yeah, scary. 
if you can't tell, that thing is scared. You know, that little man, he's scared. He's scared of what's going to happen today. And Vinny Fund Manager coming into the office, driving into the office. Could you imagine how scary it's going to be opening the market, right? The positions are open. The market opens. What is NVIDIA going to do? Can he win his trades? If he doesn't, I don't know what's going to happen to him. Is he going to keep his job? We'll see. But anyway, Group B, uh, their next declaration happens in 19 days on 11 shirks. <laughs> okay, here we go. October, synthetic income, 92 mil. What? Yes, 92 mil. <laughs> That's $1.94 per share because they have no weekly and call income. So if you look at that and then you compare it with the uh, IV estimate, that's a 51% IV, $1.08. $1.08 to $1.94. Pretty big gap, but either way, it's over a dollar. So we're happy. Outstanding holdings for uh, Mr. NVIDI. What are you doing? Uh, well, what's he doing? He's making money on the synthetics so far on paper. And then he's got the calls. Again, the scary calls. It cost 82 cents to close the call, right? 82 cents to close the 138. The 138. The 138, it, it, they made 165 when they opened it. 82 cents to close. That's a little expensive. They want that number to run down, all right? We got to yield max, maximum yield. All right. Total net assets, 1.2 bill. The NAV is 25.34, and the trade price is 25.37. Okay, let's move on to the other two. Start with Amazon or AMZ. Amazon yesterday went up 0.34%. AMZ went up 0.31%. So, yeah, nice steady day. Steady Eddie. So let's take a look at what they're holding. They got their synthetic. It's a 185, just chilling a little above it. That's good. Um, again, they got contracts expiring today. How are they doing? Let's see. Let's scroll. All right, 9,525 contracts, 187.50 strike price, 0.02% in the money in the money in the money this is okay though this is not you know they're allowed to be a little in the money and, and become profitable again you know you know how the break even works but so so if amazon stays flat today this can be a win the 215 looks to be a win but we'll see 215 contracts 192.50 strike 2.65 percent out of the money Call credit spreads, probably not needed. Um, as you can see right now, we can cash out. We get a whopping five cents and a whopping two cents for both of those call credit spreads. Again, damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, right now, their call credit spreads on almost all of these look to be rather pointless. But, you know, sometimes they come in handy. Total net assets, 184 mil. Nine, uh, NAV is 1956. Trade price, 1955. So, again, always pretty close there. Um, you know, we don't have to talk about synthetic bailout because, you know, we don't need it yet. Plus, they're not really making that much on the synthetic. But their 30-day IV for Amazon is 37.16. And the IV estimate of that is um, 56 cents. I should probably add the yield next to that. Let me think. The yield. So we'll do... Well, no, the yield is, uh, never mind, the yield is the 37%. Uh, uh, this is uh, Group D, and it declares on 1023, which I have that five, five, five days away. I added that, you know, this here, see? Today minus deck date, five days. I know it doesn't say it, and I know it's not as pretty as the other spreadsheet, but you get what you get, and you don't get upset, right? All right, so let's look at Coney. Holy crap. Coin went down 3.08%. Coney said, I'm going to go down 10%. Well, why? Why did you go down 10%? Well, we all know why, right? Yesterday was X dividend date for C-O-N-Y. So what happens on X dividend date? Well, on X dividend date, 
the fund will drop by the distribution amount plus or minus movement in the underlying. So clearly the underlying went down. So obviously it went down from the distribution and it went down from the underlying. So Coney took a hit yesterday. Um, it you know essentially was opening at the 1501 range and um, it, well, it closed the day prior 15, 1501 and then it closed yesterday 1357. Ouch! Ouch! That sucks. All right. Let's take a look at where we stand. Well, they got a 190 synthetic. Okay, that's a valuable synthetic because take a look at coin at the top. 20420. Coin is worth 20420. Um, so right now you see the orange is greater than the pink. That's a good sp spot to be in. Now, what do they got in blue? Um, well, they got, you know, contracts expiring next week. We can go through them, but they really don't matter at the very moment. 36,965 contracts. This is at a 222.50 strike, 8.96% out of the money, six trading days to go. And then the call credit spread stands at 17% away. Is it useful? I don't know. That's a pretty big gap, but we'll see. All right, and there's the, you see the synthetic, man. That's worth some money. They can cash out. They can bail themselves out at any point in time. Uh, total net assets, 711 mil. That's, that's big bucks right there. Uh, the NAV is 1354. The trade price is 1357. 30-day IV, 92%. That is awesome. IV estimate, 96 cents. Group C, and they declare on November 13th again, 26 days away because remember we get paid every four weeks so essentially every 28 days right um comes a little quicker but people wanted this right people wanted their weekly they want to get paid every freaking week right because they're not happy with monthly they need to get paid every week right because every job pays weekly right no not really my job pays every other week I would love to get paid weekly. Believe me, I haven't gotten paid weekly, in fact, ever at the current job. Um, and I've been here forever. But, you know, the only job that ever paid me weekly was a union run job, you know. But uh, outside of that, <sighs> you dream on, right? You dream on if you think you're getting paid weekly. All right, so let's move on to the pre-market and let's have some fun here. Pre-market's always a fun time, isn't it? All right, so this is marketwatch.com. This is as of 5.11 a.m. Uh, Tesla is a little green. It's up 0.2%. It's at 2.21.33. Tesla, you know, we, again, we want Tesla to stay, you know, flat, kind of chill out. Uh, Tesla is up 0.44%. It's at 11.50. NVIDIA is up 1.18%. It's at 138.58. NVIDIA is up 0.75%. It's at 25, 6, 2556. Coin is up 2.51%, 209.32. Kony is up 1.92%. It's at 1383. MSTR is up 2.95%. They're at 199. They're about to break 200 very soon, but they're at 199.14. MSTY. They're going to get back up to 30, but right now they're up 2.11%, 2860. Got to love pre-market, man. It's, it's a fun to watch. Okay, so TSLL, uh, they're at $9.68. This is up by 0.31%. I did make an options trade yesterday on TSLL, so let's take a look at that. All right, so here it is. So I sold a $10 put, yes, $10. What does that mean? In the money. If I sell a put for a price, a strike price that's above the current price, that means it's in the money. Um, why? Because $10 is below my cost basis and it's a week away, so I think it has a chance of recovering. But either way, if I get assigned, I welcome it. So for my troubles, for putting up 10 times 10, um, I'm sorry, 10 times 100, $1,000. That's a 40, 438% annualized yield. Um, again, it was 4.38% in the money at the time. 
and it's over earnings. So 96 cents or $96 in total is what I got for that risk. Now, some of you may say that is not worth the risk, which is fine. But again, you this is the beauty of options. You pick the price point. There's always a buyer for freaking everything, man. It's just a matter of how much they'll pay, right? How much they'll pay. So $96 for shelling out a thousand bucks, at least until you know October 25th, maybe. We'll see. Again, Tesla earnings is crazy, which means IV you know, typically would reflect that and premiums will reflect that. So that's why I did the trade. But anyway, since it's Friday, I'll show you my current position on my uh, options. All right, so I got to find my options spreadsheet. Working on some videos for the weekend. All right, so here it is, TSLL. Um, again, I do own 600 shares. These are being sitting at the top, hanging out, chilling. The cost basis on that is 1175 I uh, haven't sold a call on that because the first strike price I'm able to choose based on how I trade would be $12 and a $12 call is not worth the trouble for me. I need to yield a respectable amount. So since I can't make any money on the the you know the amounts I've been assigned, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell puts and make some money that way and at the same time lower my cost basis so I can eventually sell calls on all of my shares, right? Not at the same time, but all of them eventually. All right, so here's the put party, all right? Today is October 18th. I have a nine, a 950, and a 10, right? I think, we, what did we close at? We closed at 965, so obviously, as of right now, I could get assigned the 10. The 950 is pretty close. The nine, who knows? But if I get assigned all three, guess what? I add them up here. You know what happens then? those numbers get added and they go into this number here. This gets the average of all of those numbers and it tells me what my new cost basis is. And no, I do not deduct um, any premium I make from my cost basis. My cost basis is my cost basis. My premium is my premium. These are two separate things. I collect my premium. I don't touch my premium. I don't say, oh, I can make my cost basis lower because I collected this much premium. Absolutely freaking not. Whatever I paid for these shares is what I paid. So I'm not going to lose capital just because, you know, I'm using premium to help it. So since my cost basis is $11.75, the closest strike price to that that's equal or above is 12 And if I can't sell calls at 12 guess what? Those 600 shares, they're just chilling out. They're hanging out as long as they need to. And yes, I know it's earnings. And yes, I know TSLL can tank even after earnings. So I may be selling puts for quite some time, but this is what I was preparing myself for. This is what I'm ready for. So, um, and I'm taking you guys on the journey with me. Um, obviously, I would prefer it be green after earnings. Um, I'd also prefer, I'd, I, well, I'd actually prefer two things happen. I prefer we close below nine today, so I get assigned all 300 of these shares. And then I prefer that earnings go well and we turn green. But obviously things don't always work out your way, so I have to prepare for any type of scenario. But anyway, I just wanted to show you my current status of where I stand heading into today, because I am my own fund, right? This is the, uh, the Rod Options Party, or we'll call it the Roddy ETF, R-O-D-Y. All right, so let's move on to the, uh, go back to pre-market. All right, so we left off on TSLL. TNA continues to go up. I mean, man, you know, under 40 is a great spot to sell puts on this. You know, even 42 is a good spot to sell puts on this. But 47.50, I am not touching this. I mean, I, I understand it may be just out of reach, but I don't care. Again, I'm busy with TSLL anyway, so I'll just leave TNA alone. But they're up 0.96%. They're at 47.50. <laughs> AMDY, how you doing? Uh, we're up 0.45%, 13.38. AMZY, always impressive. Good job, buddy. You're up 0.66%. You're at 1968. You're doing your job. Bitcoin, okay. You're up 1.71%, 67,000, almost 68,000. About to hit 70. We'll see. Uh, Bitex is up 3.34%. It's at 32.14. 
You know, this one, the price range, again, I don't, man, this is, I don't know about Bitcoin lately. It's just been up. It's, I feel like we're due for something here. All right, SOXL. All right, what happened yesterday? It went green, super green, which, you know, was a good scenario for me, and I'll show you why. So they're up, as of right now, they're still up. They're up 2.56% at 36.11. Let me show you what I did yesterday. Um, first, we'll go here. So I, I, I kind of write everything in the actual picture so I can share it. Um, and it's easy, right? So it's all in the picture. So anyway, what did I do? I sold a put on SOXL two days ago, right? Because SOXL was tanking a lot. It was tanking during the week. And I was like, you know what? Here's an opportunity. I know I'm not, I know I'm busy with TSLL, but let me get this out. I sold a put on TSLL, 33 bucks. The next day it flew up. Next day was yesterday. So what I do, I bought it back. <clears throat> I bought it back for cheap, right? For cheap. So what did I... Why did I buy it back? Well, because I was able to collect 57% of the total premium, right? The total premium. I collected 57% of that in one day. Originally, this was nine DTE, nine days till expiration. So I changed that from what from nine to one. I don't have to wait nine days. In fact, I got my collateral back. As soon as I did a buy to close, I got $3,300 back. So I shelled up $3,300. I collected 57% of the premium. And if you annualize that, you know, obviously it's not realistic to annualize this because this is not, you know, how things go. But if you annualize that, it's a 995% yield. And should I annualize that? Yes. I mean, yes, I should. Because I want to know, like, is it worth it to do these things? Like, is it worth it to do a buy to close? Because sometimes I don't want to do that. But if I'm making nine, you know, Get my money back in a day. I'm making this much in a day, putting up thirty three hundred dollars. Absolutely, you know, absolutely, it's worth it. So that's a scenario where you close that thing early. I know we joke in the options trading chat in my Discord. You, I lost my man card, but it's okay because some, you know, because real men let their options expire, right? Real men. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. This is a buy to close. We cashed out. This is easy freaking money right here. So anyway, that was the update on SOXL. Hope that made sense. All right. So I think, yeah, they're the last one. So um, so that's the update on everything. Um, that's the update on YieldMax. That's the update on my options. That's the update on everything. Probably the, um, yeah, no, no 3 o'clock video today. Um, I did not get up at 3 a.m. to make another video because I actually uh, have to, well, I have guys night tonight. So, um, I plan on, if possible, making my Friday video tonight, but I'll still post it at 6.30 a.m. the following morning, but I'm going to try to make it tonight. Why? Obviously, I'm going to be out late um, and trying, you know, to have fun um, drinking who knows what. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I can get that video posted out before I leave for the night if the trades are posted Unfortunately, most of these are expiring still today. I was hoping a lot of these funds would close out their trades early, and but that did not happen. So I'm screwed. I'm, I got a busy ass Friday right after work before I go out. And as always, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you're entertained. If not, we will try again. When? When? Tonight. <laughs> Probably. Um, we shall see. Um, if you enjoy this content, please hit the like button. Please hit the like button. It goes a long way. It does. It tells YouTube, this is what's up. Yeah, what's up? We got likes here. Hello. Spread the video. All right. Enough of these other guys with their fancy thumbnails, with their face, you know, their big fat faces in the thumbnail screaming or whatever the hell they're doing. I guess YouTube loves them. YouTube loves the faces, the weird faces, the you know, the funny faces. I I don't know why. It's just is that like automatic clickbait? Oh my god, a face. Let me click it. You know, I don't know. Anyway, guys, so it's keyword time, I guess. So as I mentioned, um, it's Friday night. Finally get the get the hell out of the house, take a take a break. So uh, maybe we'll play cards, maybe we'll play cash games, maybe we'll just hang out.
But either way, it's guys night. You know what that means? Today's keyword, if you made it this far in the video, is guys night. So whether you're a guy or a girl, you should have guys night or girls night on occasion, if you can, if you have someone to watch your kids. Obviously, my wife will stay home and watch the kids. Um, because why? Well, it's nice to just get out for once, right? Even though we're old farts, uh, we still deserve a guy's night. So if you made it this far in the video and you want to prove it, all you got to do is type guy's night. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as mentioned, if you see the video posted tonight, it's because I actually made it tonight um, because I don't want to and I probably can't get up at 4 a.m. tomorrow. Um, so and at the same time, I do not want to miss posting a video. So I'll do what I can. I'll get it up tonight. If not, I got to, you know, figure it out. Maybe take a break. Go in my friend's bathroom, make the video there. So <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, so that's all I got for today. Let's see how these trades go. Let's hope we close out making some profits today. Oh, yeah. And happy payment day. Coney payment day. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below how much you're getting paid by Coney. Do you love Coney still? Are you collecting this dividend and getting out? Let me know down in the comments. All right. Have a great day, everyone. And I will talk to you tomorrow morning. Later.